So I spent last night sat in the Linden Tree pub mulling over my scorecard from my last round of golf when I had a realisation. I don't need half the clubs in my golf bag and neither do you. Now I did wonder if that cider had gone to my head but after a good night's sleep I'm convinced that I'm onto something. So could it be we're actually spending money on golf clubs we just do not need? And my theory is not only going to save you money, but it's going to make you a better golfer. Now that scorecard revealed that I only used seven clubs in compiling a score that was just three over par. I'm going to put that theory once again to the test. I'm at Linden Hall in Morpeth, Northumberland. It's a six and a half thousand yard par 72 golf course. It looks fantastic. The sun is coming out. I'm going to show you in today's video, hopefully, why I can shoot a low score with just seven clubs in the bag. And by you doing the same, it will improve your golf massively. Right, a better than expected start, well one under through the first three holes and a great birdie start and then a couple of really good up and downs but at this stage I've used five golf clubs and what you're going to want to know is what are the seven clubs that are in my bag and how this theory is going to help you. And what I will say first of all about Linden Hall is just how good are the greens, they're pure. Come on, be right. Oh, that wasn't a very friendly bounce. That was pin eye, really super strike. And again, that was a six iron. That's one of the clubs that I've already used, I think on three occasions. And one of the go-to clubs that I have in my bag are relevant of how many irons I've got to choose from. That was 150 yards. My six iron normally goes around 165. So what you'll notice there is a slightly different swing. The ability to take a little bit off that club allows me to understand what I can do with it. So one of the aspects and the positive elements of having limited clubs is you get better control. You start to play a few different uh, shots and understand what you can do with just one single club in their hand. And that gains loads of confidence. Right, so here's the first two clubs that um, are in my bag. One is the putter, that's a, a given. We've got to carry one of them. The wedge I've been playing on every shot you've seen so far, and unfortunately, that was my worst effort of the morning, uh, is a 54 degree. And the reason I like a 54 degree wedge is that it's got plenty of versatility. So I can, I can use it in a bunker. I can uh, flight it down a little bit, play full shots, half shots, and the key point for me is the fact that I can get familiar with it and get comfortable with it in all those different scenarios. 
And that's what breeds confidence. And rather than me reaching for, you know, I know some people carry four wedges in a bag. I mean, I couldn't get any more confused. I'm grabbing that 54. I know what I can do with it. And uh, well, it breeds confidence, that familiarity. Right, can I make another par save? Oh, God, ne <laughs> nearly. I really did think that was going in. But that brings me back to level par, and uh, I'll reveal another couple of clubs, but how good is Linden Hall so far? come up a tad short right just on the fringe but i'm going to elect to put a little bit of moisture still we're very early making sure we're out the way of the uh, busy day at linden hall go on it's got a chance that yeah i think took a little bit off the fringe there um otherwise that was a good line and i've definitely got the putter working well today and on target and the greens are running pure and this is of course another episode of off the beaten track if you're new to the channel, then uh, basically I'm trying to discover as many golf courses as I can that uh, bring them to you, really. I mean, I've found so many new golf courses I've never heard of, certainly never played before, and we found some absolute belters. But what I want to know, and you can comment down below, if I was to organise an event in the UK at one of these venues, and maybe a couple of venues spread around the UK, would you be interested in playing? So any feedback down below would be encouraging to whether or not it's something we can look to pursue. What a beautiful par three this is. Hole seven, 135 off the whites. The target is tiny and there's water down the left. How brave do we want to be? Oh, and that is such a good shot. Just gone past the flag and coming back down a slope. I don't think it was spin. I've got a feeling there might be a bit of a bank there. It went right over the top of the flag. Now, interestingly enough, I'm seven holes in and that is the six club I've used so far this morning. And I think it's about time I revealed what those seven clubs are that I choose that are most important to me. What a lovely par three that is, you know. And uh, a lot more water down that, uh, well, left-hand side than I could see from the tee box. Difficult to put quite a lot of swing on this. Do you know what? It's definitely the right line, but just um, not enough pace. I'm definitely seeing the putts today. Um, but yeah, what is, uh, what is good though is, uh, as you can probably tell, and I mentioned earlier, the greens are running pure, so uh, you've got, you start, that starts for me to build a bit of confidence. You start to commit to the line and you know the only thing that's wrong is uh, when you start to miss them. Well, that's down to you. But yeah, another great par three. Yeah, that's solid. Short par four and hopefully that's short of the bunker. Oh, yeah, maybe didn't take enough time to have a look what was in front of me there because I think that's a sneaky little bunker on the right that I may have gone into. Right, so I think it's time to reveal, before I play the ninth hole of my round, what my seven clubs are. You know there's a driver in there, you know there's a putter in there, and I've already told you I've got a 54 degree wedge. At this point, I've still only used six of the seven clubs, would you believe? One of them hasn't even been used as yet, but I've got, in between all that, I've got a hybrid that is a 22 degree hybrid. It's a four hybrid, and I can play that anything from sort of 170 yards to pushing out to closer to 200 yards. That's a key number for me. I then go into a six iron, I then go to an eight iron, and then I've got a pitching wedge. That's the one club that I haven't used yet in this round. And the utility wedge, as I'm gonna call it, is a 54 degree. And they're my seven clubs. Now, this isn't sort of practice what you preach. 
Lewis will tell you if we're ever getting back on the channel uh, in most of the Thursday night roll-ups that I play in, I carry and I'm uh, too lazy to lug around 14 clubs anyway and I'll generally carry something very similar to this amount of clubs in my bag. And why it's important for me and why it's always been a thing for me over the years is I love familiarity and confidence that I've mentioned but I also love the ability to hit different type of shots and whether that be a half swing, whether that be to flight the ball a little bit lower and around the greens to be able to play a 54 degree wedge in a numerous uh, different ways again improves your game no end so for me it's not about on a Saturday if you're playing a medal do you want to stick 14 clubs in your bag yeah go ahead and do it but from time to time try this limited bag setup and just get familiar get real confident with just half of that bag and I'm telling you now that it will improve your game because the biggest thing in golf to me is confidence and having confidence in just half your bag is perfect if it then breeds confidence in 14 clubs then all good for you but for me this is a great way of improving your game all around The other way this theory works well, in my opinion, is I see lots of videos that people advising on how to break 80, how to break 85, how to break 90 or 100, whatever it may be. And the first thing that seems to be missing with the advice that's given is the fact that if you're no good using a certain club, then don't play it. Chuck it out the bag for a bit. I hear so many golfers who play with driver, are not very good with driver, and then hits a shot, it goes out of bounds, and says, you know why I just cannot use this club. So why is it in your bag? Don't put it in the bag. Don't put it in the bag until you feel confident enough to use it and just play clubs that you are happy with and that you are confident with. Keep the ball in play. It doesn't matter what club it is. Keep the ball in play. Keep plodding on down the fairways and your scores will come down. The 18 hole sits in the grounds of the Linden Hall Hotel and Spa. The resort is part of the McDonald's Hotel Group and is very much a premium venue with a wide choice of room types. But the one feature I loved was the Linden Tree Pub, which was also on the grounds. A great place for post-game food and drinks and even the option to play a little bit of snooker. Linden also boasts a state-of-the-art driving range and coaching facility. That's probably the best drive of it today. It's tight, so we'll wait and see, but that is definitely got, uh, well, as good as I've got. It's not a bad effort, is it? Sick. Oh yeah, take that any day. It's a little bit of a fiddly one. I just said off camera and I feel like I should say it or repeat it on is that the condition of the greens, which I've already mentioned, have been incredible. As good as anything I've played this year, uh, both in terms of pace, pure on a roll. And uh, I just think at times you've got to congratulate the greens team because they've clearly done a fantastic job. And uh, I'm going to give myself that one. Nice chip, wasn't it? Well, that was a monster putt, so obviously I like the 13th golf hole, but seriously, it's a real good hole. Par five, meanders through bunkers, tree lines, and then when you get anywhere near your approach, then you've got a pretty small target to aim at, and you're hanging on, or at least I was on that right-hand side, because you're fearful of going uh, left. But yeah, and uh, another great, stunning golf hole. And of course we need a photo of the week competition. So as ever, Tracy or Andy in the comments section below.
Well, that happens quite a lot on camera and uh, trust me, that's one take. There's no, uh, <laughs> I just feel like sometimes when the ball rolls in, you feel like we've had 20 goes in it. Anyway, that's me done, finishing on a birdie and uh, great closing hole there, 18, 17, a little par three. And I've got to say, I think the back nine is, uh, is more difficult and uh, more interesting in my opinion and certainly asks a little bit more of your game, but thoroughly enjoyed it. Then and all in the backdrop there is, uh, you've already seen the room and um, the hotel itself, great setup. Pub the Linden Tree, which this video started at, is a great place for, uh, for you to go and have your sort of post-match drinks and something to eat. It's a really good setup and ideal for, uh, well, society golf, superb, or a day out and uh, no doubt you would have uh, a great day and uh, in our case, a great stopover. That's me done, as far as I'm concerned, another episode of Off The Beaten Track where I've certainly discovered somewhere where I didn't know of previous. Really enjoyed it and I hope you did too. So don't forget, comments down below. I don't know who got photo of the week this week, but no doubt it'll be the lady behind the camera. And uh, I'll see you all soon, or I'll see you next Monday. What a finish. <laughs>